Oh, hello. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Today we're doing something different, but I'm trying something new and I wanted to take you guys along with me. I want to make a new intro for my YouTube videos. I made one about a month ago using a bunch of drag and drop elements, but I wanted to kind of do an experiment and use a project template because this is something that I've kind of strayed away from. I mean, you open them up and you've got just adjustment layers and effects and titles and places where you got to put your footage and it's just it can be very very overwhelming hard to wrap your brain around but i wanted to try it we're going to be using motion array to find our template and our music for our intro motion array is kind of a one-stop shop for a whole bunch of assets that you can use to make your videos better i mean they got intro templates outro templates end screen templates title templates logo animations just a whole bunch of stuff for davinci resolve and premiere pro and after effects and final cut and adobe rush and They've even got like music and sound effects and stock footage and photos, just anything you need all under one subscription. And they just became a part of Artlist. So they come with that legendary unlimited license. So you can actually use anything that you download whenever and wherever you want. So it's it's a pretty good deal. I'm going to link them below. So this is Motion Array. We're here on the home screen and you can see, I mean, like I said, they got templates, presets, motion graphics, plugins, music, sound effects, videos, photos, just anything that you might need. I need to sign into my account real quick. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to let you see my, uh, my password. Sorry. All right. So we need DaVinci Resolve templates. Now, historically, when you go to a site that has DaVinci Resolve templates, or if they have templates for a whole bunch of stuff, you're not going to find a lot for DaVinci Resolve. There's just not a lot of people making them. But if you look at Motion Array, we got a whole bunch of stuff here, which is really, really cool. I mean, we got pages and pages and pages and pages of stuff. We need to narrow this down. So we've got some filters here. We're going to go intros. The thing that I like when it comes to intros and, and stuff like that is like that dirty, grungy, some nice rock music behind it. So I'm going to be looking for a piece of rock music. I'm going to be looking for a intro template that we can use so we're just going to go ahead and search grunge here find one that catches our eye what's this one grunge opener that that you know that's not too bad that's not too bad it's not exactly what i'm going for but maybe maybe we can do something with it let's open it up let's see what it comes with grunge opener is 10 titles 12 videos and one logo we've got related templates down here let's see if we've got something that catches our eye what's this fast glitch intro let's go ahead click on that one real quick that one's not bad i like this fast glitch intro we're gonna go ahead and uh and we're gonna use we're gonna use that one now let's head over to audio royalty free music again we got a bunch of filters we can filter by beats per minute by duration and we can filter by genre let's see here so we've got rock hey look at that logos it's probably like short ones right probably yeah look at that 19 second song 12 second song eight second song okay so we can find something in here okay so this is really cool i found a template which you saw and i found a piece of music now when i listened to the music on motion array it had three separate versions of the music and it seemed like it was all on one track there's just varying lengths varying intensities and stuff like that but when i downloaded it if you look here it actually gave me three separate tracks and each track is a different version that's really really cool i don't have to cut it out or anything it's just right there i like that and then if we come here flash fast glitch intro i can't talk today guys if we look here we've got our davinci resolve archive so all we really need to do is just import this archive and we'll have the project and all the media and all of the elements and everything should be all set up for us. So let's go ahead and try that out. Here we are. We are in the DaVinci Resolve Project Manager. We're going to right click, restore project archive, fast glitch intro DRA, open, and we just got to wait for a little bit and eventually it'll all import. Yep, there it is. Fast glitch intro. Let's go ahead, double click on that. Open it up. See what we've got going on. I'm a little scared. I'll be honest, because like I said, I've kind of shied away from project templates. They've always been a little bit overwhelming to me. So I, I'm not really sure what to expect here. Yeah, this is, this is kind of overwhelming. I mean, we've got title clips. I can see that we've got different elements. We've got an adjustment clip. We've got another adjustment clip, more adjustment clips, shots, 
nested shots. It's just, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It's very, very overwhelming. On top of that, you got a 19 second long sequence here. That's way too long for an intro. So not only am I gonna need to get all my footage into here and figure out how to make this template work, I also need to cut it down without screwing everything up so that it's the right length. That's gonna be interesting. So what I'm thinking we might need to do first is just get all of our stuff in here and that way, that way it's all there and then we can cut it down from there. I think that's probably the best way to do this. But before I do any of that, I need to read the documentation because all of the templates that come with Motion Array, all the ones that you can get from Motion Array, they come with documentation on how you can actually use the templates, which is very, very helpful. So I'm gonna go watch that and then we'll see what we can do. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. It's it's really not. Thank God for that documentation. I was feeling very overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. But here's here's how this whole thing is set up. All of these areas where it says shots, nested shot, all this stuff down here. These are actually timelines. This whole template is just made up of some effects and some adjustment clips and a whole bunch of timelines which is really cool let me show you what i mean if we go into our edit bin and we come over to shots here are all of our shot timelines so if i just go into here and i bring a clip into this timeline then when i go back to the final render it's going to actually show up right here where it says shot one so let's i'm going to show you let's go ahead uh, we'll come back into shot one and i also also with this template it comes with bins already for your music and for your media so i went ahead and i dragged my music into there and my media into that bin so let's go ahead and grab a piece of media real quick we'll start with probably a talking headshot let's start with a talking headshot here so we'll go into here and we're just gonna find there we go and we'll start an in point and we really don't need to set an out point because the length is determined by the length of the timeline so if we come here and just drag that in there and then we come back to our final render put our playhead back at the beginning there i am so i'm gonna go ahead and just drop all of those in there and then we can move on to the text because i have a feeling text might be a problem that was pretty quick and painless. Well, not quick. There was like 12 different timelines I had to put footage in. But if we look at our final project right now, we can see I've got I've got a whole bunch of footage in this template and it, it actually, you know, looks pretty good. Now we need to move on to the text. The text I kind of envisioned being an issue. There's a weird texture on the text. It's like a, a gradient or shiny. Let me let me show you what I mean. So the text is is set up a lot like the footage is. So it's all in timeline. So if we come over here to text, you got text zero, text one, two, three, four. You know, we got eight different shots. So we uh, let's go ahead and go into here. Right, and then we've got this text and you can see nothing is showing up yet. If I come in here and we'll just type in J Lipman, we're gonna go ahead and change the font to my favorite font, which is Muli. I'll go Muli Bold. Now, if we come back to final render and come back to the beginning of our timeline, yeah, you see that like chrome effect? I saw that when I was previewing it on Motion Array. I'm not a huge fan of that chrome effect. I kind of just want white text. I think that would look better. So I'm not 100% sure how to get rid of this. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and we'll right click on this, open in timeline. Okay, so we've got a texture here. So I'm thinking that if we disable the texture, nope, the text disappears as well. So there must be some compositing going on or some masking or, or something. Oh, we got another timeline in here. So let's go ahead and open in timeline. So now we've got the presents timeline and we've got the text zero zero timeline. So let's see, color white, bold, Direction automatic, line direction automatic, right on. None of that is there. So maybe in layout, type is point. Maybe if we do path and come over to our presents, get rid of that. 
Yeah, that's not working either. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's happening here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna delete that element and we're just gonna replace it with plain white text in the font that I like and see what that looks like. To be continued, Ugh, I've been, I've been playing around with this text for a while and I've come across a couple issues, not Motion Array's fault at all. This is all just me. See, there's a couple things going on here. I, I want to, one, cut this thing down so it's only about 10 seconds long. It's the longest that I want to make it. But there's a whole bunch of text here and it all has some textures that I'm not really too fond of. So here's what I'm going to do. What I did was I deleted everything that had text in it. So now all I've got is this logo section here and those I need to drop in, but I, I just, I deleted all the text. So now it's just the footage and the effects and the transitions. And now what I want to do is I want to cut all of this down to where it's only 10 seconds long. And then we're going to go from there and we're going to add our text back in. But instead of using the sequences that came with the templates, I'm just going to use the text plus element and then maybe add like a digital glitch effect or something like that, which is super easy in DaVinci Resolve because all that stuff is built in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this down. But first we need to choose our music. I'm going to go ahead. There's three different forms of the track that I chose. And this one here is only about 10 seconds long. So I'm just going to drag this in here. And what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to set some markers. We're going to play this back and we're going to set some markers. So I need to put on, I need to put on my headphones and we're going to go ahead and play this back, set some markers where we want our cuts to be and, and all of that stuff. The most important thing I think is where that logo is going to land because everything else has so many shakes and flashes and it, it, the whole keeping up with the timing and the music isn't as important, but where that logo comes in is super important. So we're going to definitely pay attention to that. So let's go ahead and, and listen to this real quick. Okay, so as long as our cuts sort of line up here, we should be good to go. Let's start cutting. Not bad, not bad. I think we, we may have it here. We just need to add our text, we need to add our logo. Let's do the logo, logo is the same thing, it's a timeline. So if we just click on that, delete that, bring this in, and here we go. And now, if we come back to final render, all right, let's play this. That's not bad. I'm actually kind of liking that. So let's go ahead and move on to adding our text and we'll go from there. So what I want to do is actually just grab some text here. I'll get rid of this, go to titles, text plus, and we'll call this one Jay Lipman. Increase the tracking just a little bit. Increase the size. Make this Muli. Let's do semi bold. That'll work. Text effect here. This needs to be shorter. Just separate this kind of into thirds here. And we're going to need to add two tracks. And let's see here. Where is let's see, settings? Okay, so this one here is going to be filmmaking, editing, gear. And now let's go ahead and search our toolbox for glitch. Oh, that's a lot of glitches, but we don't want that. We want fusion effects, digital glitch. Boom. 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 So let's wait for that to render and then we'll see our final product.
So what what are the takeaways here? I mean, that was a fun project. It was fun. Did I learn anything? Sure. I learned that project templates aren't nearly as intimidating as I thought they were as long as they come with documentation so I can learn. And uh, I guess that's the takeaway. If you take the time to learn, you can pretty much figure anything out. So this is something that I want to do a lot more of learning new things, showing you as I'm learning. Maybe you'll learn something too. Maybe it'll just give you the courage to try something new. Who knows? Either way, this was fun. I, I like the way it turned out. So yeah, thanks to Motion Ray for sponsoring this video. Again, they'll be linked below if you want to check them out. In the meantime, uh, go ahead and check out this video. This this video right here. It's all about my uh, my thoughts on YouTube intros as a whole. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And thanks for watching. My camera's about to die. I'll see you later.